Cool. So now I would like to transition to our uh, other talk and give the stage to our head of data at Datafold, Will Sweet. Uh, we actually have something special to share with you all today. Um, we started Datafold building a SaaS tool, but um, we are opening up a release of an open source tool today um, that we believe will help the workflows of data engineers using dbt massively i know that a lot of you are actually using dbt on your day to day so hopefully you will find it very useful um, we also at datafold believe that data quality although it's an important topic is not the end goal because no one really can quantify it in in any concrete manner and uh, what instead what we should be doing about improving it is actually improving our workflows. So that's, that's our philosophy. And I will let uh, Will drive it and share with you all what we built here at Datafold. Yeah, thanks, Club. Quickly pull up uh, my screen. Great. Um, so yeah, as Glove said, my name is Will Sweet. I am the head of data and product experience here at Datafold. Um, our mission here is to make you know the fastest way to validate DBT models uh, during development and deployment. Um, and today I'm going to talk about this new integration, which Glev teed up uh, of our open source tool and uh, DBT. So uh, you might have heard the concept of data diff, especially if you follow Datafold for a while. Uh, this is commonly associated with our deployment or CI/CD workflows, um, but that's our cloud product. That's not what we're going to talk about today. Today, we're going to talk about shifting left in our open source project, which is much more focused on development. So just as like a general question, uh, how do you check your work when you're actively like developing on a model? Say you're working in single player mode. Uh, are you doing nothing, ad hoc queries? Are you the crazy person who dumps stuff the spreadsheets and really digs into it there. Um, so for example, like let's take this change where what we're really doing here is we're swapping out one uh, source table for another, moving from signed in to or created. And we're also adding in a couple more columns. Uh, are you like so confident in the change that you're making here that you just push straight to production? Are you uh, running your dbt model and then digging in to run ad hoc queries uh, such as like making count assertions are you trying to compare with an accept or you know maybe you're looking at uh the intersect of these two tables the one that's currently in production and the one that's currently uh in development the one you're working on um or again are you the dropping it to csv and kind of doing something like this where you're comparing all the columns and trying to come up with a match and creating these crazy ad hoc notebooks as you go regardless of what you do it's really hard to look at this code and know the effect that it'll have on the data and looking at this it looks super valid to me as uh, someone who would have written stuff like this many times like i might have shipped this in the past um, but I wouldn't necessarily be confident in the work until I check it. Uh, so in a second, I'll show you how we're using data diff to gain that confidence, but in a fraction of the time. But first of all, I kind of want to quickly go over diff if you're not familiar with the concept. Um, so you can think of diff as the before and the after. Uh, if you're familiar with GitHub or kind of what you're seeing here in code before is on the left, that's what you know, the SQL that's currently running in production, uh, the after what we're working on in development is on the right. Um, it's the same kind of concept, but we're actually looking at the data that comes out of the left, what's in production, the before, and then the after what we're working on development. And Jared touched on this a little bit with uh, duck uh, testing earlier. So what does this look like we, when we combine this data diff concept with DBT? Well, this is the thing that we're releasing today that we're pretty excited about. Uh, so you typically, again, would have that DBT run, select your table, your model that you're working on. Um, and we now have this data diff dash dash DBT flag that you can then insert onto the end of that run. So you can either run it as one command with these double ampersand uh, argument, or you can also run it in two separate commands where you run your DBT model, you might look at the output, and then you can run this data diff DBT. And what this does is it, again, takes the code that's currently running in production 
And it also takes the code that you're working on now and creates those data sets in your warehouse. That's what DBT has done in the past for production and is doing now as part of this run. And data diff will automatically pick up those runs and diff them for you. And this is what we're kind of showing after you make this run. So in your command line, you'll get this printout. And so as I made this change, you know, from uh, signed in to org created and added some more columns, I can now see that plain as day here where you can see we have uh, two columns. Or they were added org name and employee range. I can also see that I uh, removed 11 rows, which I may or may not have anticipated. Um, I also changed uh, 112 rows. And if we look down at this values updated piece, uh, we can see that all 112 rows actually belong to the created at column. So I am starting to get a really good understanding of maybe where I want to spend a little bit more time diving in and writing SQL. But this is something that would have taken me maybe a couple minutes, 10 minutes, a couple queries, maybe more to try to find this level of information to then dive in even further. Um, what's more is this isn't just limited to one model. So if you're familiar with the DBT syntax of adding a plus sign, I can select the DIM orgs model that I'm working on and all the downstream models as part of my DBT run. And when I do that, I can also automatically diff all those. So this is a very long printout and I'll dive into specific pieces of it. But as you can see, instead of picking up one model like we did before, we picked up all four models, the one that we changed and the three that sit downstream. We do that same comparison for the model in question. Uh, and then we can also do these comparisons for downstream models like this fact monthly financials, where we ended up removing a row from that as well. And that can get kind of scary when you're looking downstream and realizing maybe I could have figured out what the change, you know, what had on effect in the model I was working on. But when it goes downstream, I don't necessarily know. Um, so this will highlight some of those changes. And then also we'll see uh, where there are no row level differences to really you know, not make us spend time investigating something that has no impact on that table, which is great. So I quickly want to show this in action with like a quick uh, video of what it looks like when you run this. It has the same printout as before, but just to give you a sense, um, again, we're kicking off our DBT run with the model in question and all the downstreams that's running, this might look familiar for everybody who uses DBT. It's finding, running each of those models. Uh, and then this is where data diff kicks in. We piggyback off of that. We find this one table, the model we haven't uh, actually edited. And now we're looking at the downstreams. So the first downstream, the second one, which has no differences. And then the third downstream model will finally come. And all this was done in under 30 seconds. So this is a real time playback of what this looks like uh, in the workflow. So we're really excited to get this out there. Um, if you're interested in trying it out, we'd love to hear from you. My email is there. I hope you can reach out and, and dive into this with us. We have support for Snowflake and then Redshift, Postgres, uh, BigQuery are all coming. Um, we're really excited to, to get in the development workflow and really figure out what problems are important to you as you work through uh, your data model changes um, and how can we fix and prevent data errors from leaking into uh, your data pipelines. Thank you. Thanks, Will. So if someone wants to go and try um, the open source data diff, where, where should they go? Yeah, so we have a package on PyPy where you can pip install data diff uh, to actually install this. And then that dbt flag is getting released uh, today. We have some documentation on our website as well, but uh, feel free to reach out. I'd love to just talk through problems and, and incorporate your feedback into uh, the development process of, of this tool. Also a question from Lindsay. Um, are you planning to create a pre-commit hook for, for this? I haven't looked into the option at the moment, but would, would love to dive in and, and especially to hear uh, what you're thinking. I should also say that uh, kudos to DBT because these types of workflows would not be really possible if DBT hasn't solved for really basic things like, you know, creating different environments and version control. So most of my data engineering days were done uh, on Airflow where there's like no concept of development. You just change code and you publish to production. And so there is no 
nothing to really compare against. And so that, that has been always very, very painful manual process. So DBT just really solves a lot of these things for you, which I think one of the factors why it was so, has been so successful as a platform, which allows to build other workflow improvements that basically, okay, now we can create models. Um, you can also automate them, which is what we're concerned with. But um, super, super excited about uh, the further adoption of DBT. Um, cool. So we have one.